Hi there, I'm Square, and let's talk about anime. This week, we get to see the much anticipated follow up to the cliffhanger and part two of our first two parter episode, Yashihime episode 18. So, did this episode live up to the hype? Well, I have good and bad bad things to say, but first, let's go over a quick recap. We jump back in with a recap of the previous episode that lasted a little long, which leads us into Toa and Setsuna confronting Kanton. Kanton summons his wind and thunder lions to distract the girls while he works on a spell circle. The circle allows Kanton to summon a blue ogre, which appears to be a much more powerful entity. The twins try to fight the ogre without much luck, so Toa turns her attacks on Kanton himself. The two scuffle, and Kanton powers up his ogre into a stronger version, and it goes in for a sneak attack on Toa. Toa manages to dodge, and the ogre's miss turns into Kanton's demise. With Kanton taken out, the spell world fades around them. Back in the real world, they hear Baroha in the distance. This entire time, she's been fighting Totetsu on her own and keeping up pretty well. Once Totetsu realizes it's three on one, he attempts an escape. The princesses jump on the back of Takachiyo and chase after him. The chase ends up on the coast and at the feet of Kirin Maru. He scolds Totetsu for leading pests to him and sends him away, turning his attention towards the girls. Toa confronts Kirin Maru about the dream butterfly, and Kirin Maru tells them that if they could kill him, the dream butterfly will disappear as well. But he does seem to be holding some information back. Kirimaru then brings up the prophecy that he'll one day be killed by a being that is not demon nor human, and pretty much tells the girls to come at him. The girls are completely outmatched by Kirimaru. Nothing they try works. Neither attacks, skills, or even Moroha becoming Betty Yasha. Kirimaru deflects without even breaking a sweat. After a little bit, Kirimaru tires of the fight and is about to go in for the kill when the Boxaiga flies from the sky and lands between them. Shoshomaru makes his dramatic entrance with Jokin in tow. Kirimaru and Seshomaru battle. With every blow, the world quakes around them. Lightning, tsunamis, and shockwaves. The two stop with Kirimaru acknowledging that heaven and earth shudder when they fight, so there's really no point in continuing. Kirimaru decides to leave the girls alone since they're really no threat to them. But he also says he still expects Sashomaru to do the work Kirimaru desires. Interesting. Sashi takes off, leaving the girls all passed out on the beach, but not in any immediate danger. We end with the girls waking on the beach and traveling to the sacred tree, looking for some direction of what to do next, but getting no answers. I'm not sure how to feel about this episode. There were some high highs and some low lows. So it's hard for me to say how much I liked it as a whole. One thing I did really like was how the girls got absolutely wrecked by Kirin Maru. This demon lord has been an entity built up since the very beginning of Yasha Hime, and I think he followed through on the hype. It was really nice to see the girls struggle and ultimately fail in the end. The girls are powerful, but they haven't really had to try too hard or even train further to succeed at taking out Kirin Maru's perils. So I fear that he might fall into the same trap. So seeing him almost yawn at their efforts really made it feel like he's a force to be reckoned with. Kanton, on the other hand, had a very anticlimactic end. This was a peril that the girls have been struggling with for a while, which was great. He wasn't just a one and done beating on the first scuffle enemy. So him being taken out by a misstep from one of his summons was disappointing. I honestly didn't even realize what happened at first. When they did show Kanton's decapitated body, I thought maybe those were just his clothes on the ground and he pulled a disappearing act again, but I guess he's actually dead. Uh, it, it seemed so. He left behind a pearl that Riku picked up. Now Riku, he keeps grabbing my attention. He didn't seem to 
care too much about the pearls before this, like freely lending them out to multiple people. He was still collecting them, but he didn't seem too worried about them. But now it seems from this episode, he really wants to collect them all because something will happen when they're brought all together, like the Dragon Balls, I guess. It's interesting, especially since Riku showed some anger on his face in this episode. He seems to be growing impatient and it's a bit concerning. He's always appeared calm and collected before, and it makes me wonder how this will change his actions in the future. And of course, we have to talk about Sashomaru. He appeared in the sky like Tuxedo Mask, throwing his rose to interrupt the fight. <laughs> but instead of encouraging words, Sashi stepped up and came to blows with Kiran Maru. It was great to see him in action again and be reminded of how powerful he really is. And of course, Sashi is a man of few words, but his feelings really showed through his actions. He didn't say much to his daughters, but he showed up to protect them. He didn't stick around for long after the fight when they passed out on the ground, but he didn't leave until they were no longer in danger. He stood up against Kiran Maru. Even though it seems like he's indebted to him somehow, which could have possibly compromised whatever relationship the two demon lords have. And I did enjoy the little dropping of hints throughout this episode. The story of the Rainbow Pearls, two demon lords, and Dream Butterfly seems a lot more complicated than the Yasha Hime think. It was kind of nice to see them being called out on their naivete and for us to be hinted that there's a lot more going on here. But my biggest issue with this episode was one I've griped about before in the past. The lack of reactions from pretty much everyone. I feel like this is a real weak point of the series as a whole and it really showed in this episode. Toen sets enough finally got to meet their father, a father who they believe abandoned them, a father who's powerful enough to be a demon lord, a father who they've been told they have to kill. And what did we get from them? Did we get anger at seeing the parent who left him alone, a fear at how powerful he is, and the thought that they may have to face him someday? Intrigue on why he's there to save them. Does he actually care? No, we barely got a meh from them. And this doesn't make sense. Even if you've never met one of your parents before, most people would feel something when seeing one for the first time. And I feel like Toa especially should have had a reaction. She has so much guilt and anger from what happened to her and Setsuna when they were four years old, being separated in a fire and almost killed. Toa was enraged when she found out who set the fire. So where was this rage when confronting a father who should have protected them? She may not feel anger for herself, but we've seen Toa go over the deep end plenty of times on Setsuna's behalf. Did we get that? No. We didn't even get enough energy for a shrug. Ugh. I have a lot more to say on this issue as a whole. Honestly, I may even make a separate video entirely on this problem, but for now, let's talk about art. <laughs> for my last button, I decided on Sashomaru. He's always been one of my favorites, and while he's not a Yashahime main, he's so integral to the story that I feel like I could justify drawing him here. And I love how he came out. Honestly, he may be my favorite. Oh, look at his cute little face. Aw, oh, it's almost like you could forget he could rip you in half with his bare hands. And with that, I have completed my set. I've already made them into buttons and I love how they turned out. And to thank you all for supporting me this whole time and getting me to 100 subs, I want to do a giveaway. So I've set up a Google Doc in the description with some simple questions to make it easier to contact you if you're chosen. I'm not sure how many sets I'll give away yet. It'll depend on the number of entries, but I'll keep this contest open for a bit so people get the chance to enter. If this goes well, I'd love to be able to do it again. My biggest goal of this channel is to build up a community and be able to share art with a lot of people. So being able to literally give art away just makes me happy inside. <laughs> At this point though, I'm gonna ask you to do those YouTube things, like, subscribe, comment, again, all those things really help the channel. And I am still streaming on Twitch. It's been going well. I've been having a lot of fun. I've been playing a lot of card-based games. I've always been a fan of them. 
I didn't plan for my channel to go this way, but I've been playing like Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh, the Pokemon, TCG. I like those kind of things. So if you're interested, please come check me out. Times are stated here. And with that, I want to thank you for joining me today and please have an artsy day. <laughs>